Types of aggregation. One of the key strategies used in the great work is that of aggregation. And the process of aggregation creates a conscious aggregate, like us, with a mind connected to its overarching intelligence, its archetype. And for millions of years, the aggregates created were physical, very tightly knit assemblies, but we will see that this is beginning to change. The Physical Aggregate What is meant by a physical aggregate? If we use an analogy, an aeroplane is a physical aggregate. It is made from a huge number of assemblies and sub-assemblies as well as small components. The plane can fly, that is the gain in function achieved by assembly. But each of its sub-assemblies and parts have functions of their own. The fuselage is for the function of carrying goods or people. The wings are to give it the functions of lift and to keep it airborne. The cockpit is used for control and navigation. The wheels are used for takeoff and landing. The tail for direction and stability, and so on. Each part of the overall assembly, each sub-assembly, has its own set of functions which contribute to the whole. Indeed, each of these sub-assemblies has its own functionality down to the very last rivet. And as in man-made creations, so it is in natural creations. We may think that simple organisms cannot have gained much by aggregation, that the first steps of sub-assembly of life would have created little added function, but we would be wrong. Furthermore, those functions have stayed stable and have been built on. The cell is one of the most successful and one of the first sub-assemblies of life. In nature, function has been added to every aggregation whether the final result is an ant or something as large as a planet. Nothing in the physical structure of atoms or molecules or compounds can explain why they take on the properties they do when combined. Water is formed of hydrogen and oxygen, both gases, but water is a liquid and has properties totally unlike its constituent elements. But we can conclude that physical aggregation has been an exceptionally successful strategy. The limitations of physical aggregation. What marks out physical structures is that there are often trillions of the basic component parts. But as you move up the hierarchy of the assembly, the number of sub-assemblies diminishes until you need only one or two of each one. But every one needs to communicate with the others and 
the controlling mind. As such, one of the limiting factors is being able to design a communication system that is quick enough and a controlling mind intelligent enough to coordinate them all. We, for example, have only a small number of organs, but we have hundreds of thousands of tiny cells which go to form these organs and all need to communicate with a mind that may not be able to handle all these signals. The other noticeable rule that applies is that the lower down the hierarchy of assembly, the smaller the components have to be so that the resulting thing is not untenable in its environment. Elephants are the largest land animal, whales the largest sea creatures, so there is a limit on any physical aggregate size determined by its intended location. So the problems of communication, the limitations of a single controlling mind and the limitations of the environment have affected the types of physical organism that have resulted. And since the overall objective of the great work has been to continually add new function, a change of strategy has been noticeable towards different types of cooperation between the same or different species. A form of distributed processing using multiple minds. A cooperative. Temporary cooperation as a strategy. Temporary cooperation is achieved by clustering and not physical bonding. Organisms of the same type form temporary groups or aggregates which can be dissolved as and when the need for added function ceases or new function requires new groupings or the organisms need to split to reproduce. Loose clusters such as this, cooperating together, can be given considerable added function. And this strategy has been around longer than we may realise. Cooperating simple cellular organisms in large numbers were needed at the early stage of evolution to change the atmosphere. And they still do. Algal blooms in the sea absorb gases which would otherwise upset the balance of atmospheric constituents. But flocks, herds, crowds, companies, swarms and so on are all forms of cooperating groups. Give them a name, give them a purpose, and you have effectively given them extra functions. And crowds often seem to acquire an invisible and irrational controlling mind. A person in a crowd may behave entirely differently to the way they behave at home. Go to any football match and you will see the individual's personalities submerge and the person take on the identity of the crowd. An individual may find themselves belonging to several groups. They might work for a company, belong to a club and also work for their family. And in each case, the group acquires a set of functions all its own, with the individual subsuming themselves to this group identity. And we often talk about loyalty and mindless behaviour in this context. Individuals within a group may also take on specialised roles within the group, mimicking physical aggregations in the way they are structured Thus, whilst physical aggregates may have specialised sub-assemblies that achieve certain functions, a cooperating group may have functionally specific roles. A colony of bees has workers, drones and a queen. In any company, you get people in finance, computing, personnel, sales and delivery, along with the production workers. 
and it is coordinated by a board of directors, a managing director and a chairman, the mind of the organisation. And where physical aggregation has ceased, loose aggregation of that species, the cooperating group, may take over. But the limitation is always the mind and the lines of communication. If either of these fail, the entire aggregate fails and collapses like a house of cards. Symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship occurs between differing species. They do not form a tight physical aggregation, nor do they form the entirely loose relationships found in cooperative relationships. In symbiosis, the bond is semi-permanent. The only reason the bond may be broken is when one member of the partnership dies. But if one dies, they may all die, unless a replacement can be found. A Portuguese man of war is a symbiotic cluster of several types of simple organism with an entirely invisible mind that does the navigation, steering and sail setting. Mixer Trichina paradoxa is a single-celled creature that inhabits the digestive tract of the Australian termite, supplying the enzymes that break down the cellulose into food and building material. The siboglinid tube worm is found in deep sea hydrothermal vents and cold seeps in all of the world's oceans. The worm has no digestive tract and is solely reliant on bacteria for nutrition. The bacteria oxidize either hydrogen sulfide or methane. Dependency Some apparently symbiotic behaviour may only benefit one of the organisms. It is thus better described as dependency. Parasites like lice or the barnacles that grow on the skins of baleen whales or the worms that live in the digestive tracts of many animals are dependent on their host for survival but their host obtains no benefit. Temporary Synergistic Cooperation Synergistic aggregation involves two or more different species. In a synergistic relationship, each species looks after the other in return for increasing the totality of the two species' functionality. Each partner is not, however, dependent for its continued existence on the other organism. Thus, if one dies, the other could, as it were, move on or survive without it. Examples of synergistic cooperation include man and his sheepdogs, the canary down mines. And this is the resuscitator used to save them if they detected gas. And man and the hunting hawk. A Solaris clownfish that dwell among the tentacles of Rotary sea and enemies also have a synergistic relationship with them. The territorial fish protects the anemone from anemone eating fish and in turn the stinging tentacles of the anemone protect the clownfish from its predators. A special mucus on the clownfish protects it from the sting. Some goby fish live together with a shrimp. The shrimp digs and cleans the burrow in which both the shrimp and the goby fish live. The shrimp is almost blind, leaving it vulnerable to predators when above ground. 
In case of danger, the goby fish touches the shrimp with its tail to warn it. When that happens, both the shrimp and goby fish quickly retreat into the burrow. Overall, all these pieces of evidence lead us to conclude that the strategy now in place is almost entirely based on cooperation between and within species, with a great deal more emphasis on temporary synergistic cooperation, or perhaps we can also call it synchronicity. <laughs>